My name is Maria Dela Cruz, and I live, love, grieve, and work on the unceded, sacred, ancestral homelands and territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Musqueam, and Squamish First Nations. And I think it's it's important to acknowledge that these have been their homelands from time immemorial, and they are their homelands today. And so, as we are um, settlers and settler immigrants like myself. Um, like Yvonne said, we want to live and breathe reconciliation. And if we don't know that what that is, it's our responsibility to find out what that is. Um, some of what that might be is to make the change that we want to make in community. And so this is where I um, am focusing my work. I'm really proud of um, the path that I have followed to come here because it's been hard professionally. However, the proudest part for me in that title is that um, the part about being anti-oppression and decolonizing because that is the work that I am most focused on is to consider what the impacts have been of colonization, patriarchy, capitalism, um, and white body supremacy um, have had on us and how they truly have limited our capacity, especially for the Black, Indigenous, and racialized folks like myself, folks who have come from lands colonized for 500 years or more, which is the case for the land from which I am from. I was born on the territories of the Tagalog peoples in the archipelago of 7,000 beautiful islands called the Philippines, colonially called the Philippines, named by a king of Spain who never even came to visit. And um, the impacts of that are large and that's a completely different talk. And so um, that is a little bit about me. There's a picture of me, yay. Um, my path, my diasporic journey is a completely whole different other path. And yet I'm so well supported by the, the loving, family and friends and um, friends who have become family. And um, I am lost and found. You can see a picture there of my grandfather um, when I was little, where I was so held, um, where I believe honestly that I was the absolute happiest. And um, just in direct transition to go from the Philippines and suddenly find yourself in the cold um, of Canada um, has been a difficult journey. And these stories are what motivate me, the stories of how people came to be, how they came to this place, their relationship with the land, and how we build that relationship and strengthen it, as well as build and strengthen the relationships we have with the keepers of the land and the waters of this place. Um, I'm so thankful to all of the instructors, to Shanti, thank you so much for the Community Capacity Building Program, because it has encouraged me and actually actually literally built my capacity to do that which that I want to do despite all of the impacts of, um, of being a diasporic child. Tagumpai is a word in Tagalog which means victory and uh, today I want to talk more about victory than I want to do about about the harms that has come to me and um, that is also what I want to do with the folks that will join me on my journey. So um, as I talk about uh, oppression and colonization, um, I have felt personally the limiting, the limiting power and energy in my family intergenerationally and as well as in my ancestors of what it's like to dwell, live and try to, to thrive in a world not built for us in a system not built for us. And so it's time to smash that system. One of the ways that we do that is to come together um, and see how we can work, how can we can move from inertia to urgency, apathy to anger, fear to hope, isolation to solid solidarity and self-doubt to you can make a difference. And making a difference um, in the coaching that I have done, honestly, I've coached women with all different paths from very, very successful financially, um, uh, economically, professionally, as well as within their family. And it wasn't how much we had 
it's never how much we have or how much we've done that makes a difference. What I notice is what, what makes someone feel truly alive in what they're doing is the active pursuit of doing what they want to do, whatever it is that they want to do. And especially if that includes changing a system not made for us, a system that must change, that must be dismantled, that must be disrupted, and to challenge all those voices that tell us otherwise, including the voices in our own heads. And so here we go. <laughs> Um, I also have ADHD, full disclosure, so my notes are not linear. They are, they look like this. So I can't even follow like what I'm supposed to say next, except thank goodness for this presentation that is helping me. Um, I intend and will set up a community of practice that includes the cohort members that will join me from my own cohort, as well as cohort one, that is my invitation, as well as to support cohort two and cohort three. And Honestly, to simply capture uh, the stories and share those stories of some, of some of the time it is stories of loss, but mostly stories of success, to create a forum to identify solutions and how we address the challenges that we have, and then to collect and evaluate best practices and to celebrate our successes. That's what I wanna do. And I want to have that community of practice be a safe space after cohorts for folks to come together and really talk about what keeps us alive. How are we in actively pursuit? What is it that we wanna make change? And it can be the simplest thing. It can be simply changing the system within our own household so that we are empowering one another so that we have more unity and harmony in the household, or it can be as great as changing um, systems across the province in terms of policy and um, making more equitable spaces. This is my um, theory of change, which is if we convene to share stories about the strategies we use to impact and make change in the communities we serve, then our connection over our setbacks and triumphs will ins inspire us to leverage our strengths and widen our reach because our unity will amplify our collective power exponentially to dismantle oppressive systems and build better systems. Um, we've heard the saying in that old adage again and again, if you wanna go somewhere, don't go alone. <laughs> And certainly the CCB program has taught me that I'm not alone again and again and reminded me and sharing and listening and being in deep reflection and learning new tools to address old systems and old ways of being and old beliefs um, has made a change. And I want to continue to build on that change. If you don't want to go, if you want to go far, take someone with you. This is one of my very best friends. Her name is Michelle Wing. She is a registered clinical counselor and a registered social worker. She's also decolonizing. We only just met and she and I honestly have our own little community of practice where we're constantly discussing how we're addressing how we're addressing things, how we are uh, engaging in our community as well as engaging in our family with our children. Uh, we have our own little tiny community of practice and I know that you all guys all do too. So you understand what it is to have a community of practice. If you need a therapist, she's great. <laughs> so don't go alone. And um, I'd also like to encourage um, people who are doing things, who are in active pursuit to come and speak to us and tell us like, how is this working? What are you doing? Sarah Kim is a disruptor. She is also a colleague and friend. She was very recently with the community development team and systems change with me at Collingwood Neighborhood House, but she has moved on and is now the manager of um, advocacy and engagement at Vancouver Foundation. And uh, she is going to come to one of our community practice meetings and talk about systems change. And systems change is simply how do, we, how do we work together to change the beliefs and the, um, the knowledge and grow the knowledge so that we can change the systems that we dwell in and to improve our community? And how do we do it from a systematic approach and not just a programmatic approach? And sorry, let's go on. Next, I'll be calling in um, Lakayo Estrella. And um, Lakayo is um, 
a dear friend of mine and colleague, and we met as we were going to um, decolonizing school. Lakayo is the very first person who told me about our ancestors and how um, trans folks were held as the most divine. And um, they were fluid, they could walk through community, they could wear the clothes that they wanted to wear, they could wear their hair long, short, they could wear long robes, they could lay with whomever it is that they wanted to lay with. And because they had so much influence and were so um, able to be fluid within the villages, they were considered divine. They were actually considered the closest to the divine. And um, when patriarchy came along and saw this, uh, they sought to disrupt that power and not, not actually disrupt it, but destroy it. And we still see that today. And so those are one of the things that we're gonna address together um, as we move through our community of practice. Next. Lister Sam. <laughs> um, I don't really need to introduce her since she's already been introduced today, but um, she is a community convener and a magical being, as you know. And I'm so proud that she will be coming to speak about her active pursuit and what she is making change and how in the world. Another person is Jale Lalehon, who is a, a spiritual um, ink ritualist who will talk about the activation and release um, with with um, that intention in mind. We go on. Jyotika Chaudhari is someone who has reclaimed her name. And I'd like to her to speak about that and to speak about being a child of diaspora here on these lands and how her name and how she powerfully reclaimed it um, has given her voice, has made her voice stronger and encouraged others, so many others, to speak up and have our voices be heard as well. And never least and never last is Emerald Ascension. Uh, she was in cohort one of community capacity building. You know her and Desmond of Sorry, Sorry, Not Sorry. What they seek to do to change, um, to make cultural change in building a space that is um, honestly is indescribable for us to be able, for racialized folks, Black and Indigenous, indigenous to come together and um, have like a, a solid space to work within and through, to sell our wares, to sell our services and to just commune with one another um, is a fantastic thing. And so in between having folks come and speak are the lightning rounds. And that is when we will come together and talk about, you know, how we've been struck by lightning. No, I'm just kidding. It's how, you know, what is the light? Like what are the sparks that are within us and how do we grow that spark and make that energy grow? And so that, oh, I'm up to work. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Good work. There we go. Maria, is that good? Yes, I just thank have- my ask is that um, folks support us in um, providing if they can and if they will and are able um, funding support for those who seek to change and make impact in their community to do the to do that work and to invite the my fellow cohort members and all the other cohort members to join us in building this community of practice together. Thank you.